Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to the Prosthodontic series. And of all the videos in the series so far, this one will be the most to the point and will yield you by far the most denture related questions on the board exam. So you may have up to 10 questions on the things we cover here in this video alone. So support, stability, and retention are really, really important terms to know. So with that, let's get started. And the first term we'll talk about is support. And the definition for support is resistance to vertical seating forces. So this picture is a cross section of the edentulous ridge or the alveolar ridge. And this arrow is representing the force vector of the forces referred to in the definition. So this is going to represent vertical seating forces against the soft and hard tissues of the dental arch. So you're seating the denture in place, pushing against the ridge, and support is going to be resistance to those forces. So for the upper arch, the structures that will provide the most support are the palate and the alveolar ridge. And these are the structures that are most resistant to resorption and hence provide the most support. For the lower arch, it'll be primarily the buccal shelf that provides support and the retromolar pad area will also provide some support. Now, from the denture point of view, the denture base is going to be what's providing support. And that's the part of the denture that sits on the ridge and the palate and those structures. So the part of the denture that is intimately contacting the soft and hard tissues of the dental arch. So all of these structures definitely remember as being associated with, with support, which is resistance to the vertical seating forces. Now the next term is stability, and this is resistance to horizontal dislodging forces, which again is shown with this arrow here. So this is all about horizontal forces. So for the upper and the lower arches, the height of the ridge and the depth of the vestibule, which is providing, again, pretty much height of the ridge, is providing stability, and that's resistance to the horizontal dislodging forces. So this wall of tissue is what's going to be providing stability. Now from the denture point of view, the denture flange, that area that extends into the vestibule, is what's going to provide the stability. And that makes sense because it's just that area of the denture that's contacting those parts of the arch that we have referred to here. So we have so far support and stability. And lastly, we have retention, where we go back to talking about resistance to vertical forces, but this time they're dislodging forces. So instead of pushing up against the tissue, we're pulling away from the tissue. And retention is about how do we keep the denture in place? So for this one, we're all about the peripheral seal. And we're going to talk a lot more about that in the coming slides. So these three terms will come into play for partial dentures as well. So if you can pick one thing from this entire series to really memorize so far, support, stability, and retention, the areas of the dentures they're associated with, their definitions, those are the things that are just so, so critical to know for the board exam. So definitely I would encourage you to know those really, really well. So talking about the peripheral seal, we're gonna talk about some quick physics aspects of that. So the first term we'll talk about quick is adhesion, and this is attraction of unlike molecules. In this cute little picture here, you have water and some other, um, some other thing here, and they're two unlike molecules, and they're being pulled together. How I remember this is that all three um, words here, attraction of unlike, and adhesion, they all start with vowels. So I remember adhesion, attraction, unlike. And so those are the things that go together there. And in terms of the denture, saliva to the soft tissues and saliva to the denture base, the acrylic of the denture base, those are things that are adhering together because they're unlike molecules to each other. 
So an example of this would be intimate contact of the denture base to the tissues, creating the best seal. And now occlusal prematurities may break the retention between those things. And the flip, flip side of the coin here is cohesion, which is clinging of like molecules together. So how I remember this is all the words start with consonants. So cohesion, clinging, and like. So cohesion, clinging of like molecules. And this would be the saliva to saliva, the water molecules in saliva that are um, engaging in cohesion forces. And so what's, a, what's important here is that thick and ropey saliva is unfavorable, whereas thin and watery saliva causes better retention. So the water molecules in saliva are clinging to one another, creating a continuous undisturbed film layer between the denture and the soft tissues. And this darker gray line is uh, showing between the denture and the tissues this film layer of saliva that's forming a seal between the denture and the tissues. And now if we put those two terms together, surface tension is a combination of adhesion and cohesion forces that maintain film integrity. And the water molecules are more attracted to each other than to the surrounding air. That's a really basic understanding of what surface tension is, and it's really all we require for the board exam. And the best way to think about this is thinking about an example with the glass slabs here. So basically, the surface tension creates a very thin film layer that's very hard to disturb. So if you ever tried to pull apart two glass slabs that have a thin layer of water between them, spoiler alert, it's really, really challenging to do. So unless you interrupt the film layer at the very edge, which is called the meniscus, and that's shown in this uh, image as labeled A, which is the weakest point of the film layer since it's vulnerable to disruption by, say, your finger. If you put your finger on this part of the denture, got tried to get around the side of it, you could interrupt that film layer. And so the denture seals in place due to the surface tension created by a thin, undisturbed film layer. So that's what the peripheral seal is all about having properly extended flanges of your denture, having lots of lots of surface area of intimate contact. Those are the things that are going to provide the best resistance, like a suction cup to the underlying soft tissues. So let's talk a little bit more about extension of the dentures. So overextension, an example would be the denture flange being too long. So how this would manifest clinically, you'd get a sore spot or ulcer after wearing the denture for a while. So you can see here the flange may be a little bit overextended. It's impinging on the soft tissues, causing an ulcer or sore spot. How you would treat that is to relieve the denture, meaning trim it back in that area that is impinging on the tissues, and then reevaluate in a few weeks, see if that area healed. Another example of overextension is that the denture extends too far back, too far posteriorly. And a specific example of that would be the denture teeth are set so far back that they start to go up onto the ramus. So if you imagined a, a third molar that would be set back here, it would be on this high incline here past where the retromolar pad would be ending. and that could be a problem because occlusal forces would dislodge the denture if you had a third molar in function here as part of the denture teeth. So this is why you never really build third molars into dentures because there's no functional reason to overextend a denture that far back. So sore spots and dislodging are the two main side effects of overextending a denture. How about underextension? This would be where the denture flange is too short. And so you'd have a lack of retention because again, you'd have not enough surface area and the meniscus of the film layer 
is not protected as deep in the vestibule and it's more easily disturbed. So that surface tension that we were talking about is not as easily maintained. You can disrupt that film layer a bit easier. And again, you don't have enough or you don't have as much surface area as you could to take advantage of. And so you're not going to have as great retention as you could have. And lastly, I'll just mention uh, this important concept for the board exam. The best indicator for success of a denture is the ridge, because in all the things we talked about, the ridge can provide all three things, support, stability, and retention. And a wide, broad bridge, a wide, broad ridge is the best for this. So from left, this is the best situation, and on the right is the worst situation. So left, the square ridge, and to the right, the triangular ridge. It's basically going from best to worst case scenario. So the best indicator for denture success is the ridge. All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope it was helpful sort of tying together a lot of the things we've been talking about with anatomy and occlusion and all those concepts and really honing in on the highest yield topics you'll need to know for the board exam. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you all in the next video.